So let's also go over what you're gonna need today. So, screwdriver. Hello, my name is Jay, and welcome to my tech vault. Today, we're going to be building a $2,000 gaming PC. So last week, uh, actually last Wednesday, correct? To be correct, I built this PC following the Verge's guide. You layer it on top of the CPU. This was a bad idea. And well, it was a disaster. And that is pretty much the fact of how things went. I followed the guide exactly. Uh, there was a lot of problems with the computer. Uh, almost actually damaged some of my hardware. A lot of the thermal paste uh, got everywhere. Uh, a little bit into the socket, which I'm hoping that will basically... Uh, I fixed it. I took a toothpick and it took a long time to get all of it out. Um, but basically what we're going to do today is we're just going to go through and build a PC how it should be done. And obviously, you know, I'm also open for criticism. I know that sometimes, um, you know, I'm going to miss something. I'm human, and I know I'm going to miss something, and I'm open to welcome and welcoming any criticism or any constructive comments. Uh, obviously, hateful things are not too nice, and I, I'm one of those people that thinks that hate is not a, is a mean thing to do, but constructive criticism, of course, is a great thing to do. So we're going to start off by just explaining a little bit about the hardware, what each part does, in a rough summary. I know, obviously, you can go into a lot more depth. Then we're going to talk about the things that I use, and we'll just basically go from there. So, basically a computer has a couple parts. RAM, which I like to start off with the RAM because I'm actually uh, trying to do computer science. And I like that because RAM is actually where all your variables are stored. Now you're going, what's a variable? Well, in programs, anything, games, uh, you know, Microsoft Office, Chrome for crying out loud, variables are anything from ones to zeros, to strings, to arrays, to booleans, all those different things. Uh, true or falses, all that gets stored on your RAM. So when you're playing your games and there's a lot of things going on, not necessarily graphically, but a lot of things behind the scenes, that's where it's all getting stored on here. And that's why RAM is kind of sometimes important. So then we've got our graphics card. Now, obviously this is not anything fancy. Um, this is an old GTX 660, I believe, which honestly we're here for a PC build. I'm gonna do my best to do for all parts. And um, basically what we're gonna do today is just talk about this one. So graphics cards, basically do all the graphical processing, which is a simple, easy answer. Um, basically more of like the ray tracing, which will be coming out in the new series, the 20 series. And right now we've got just stuck with the current G4 series, which doesn't really have ray tracing, especially this card. This card won't have ray tracing. But a lot of the graphical shading um, algorithms, all those code is run on here. It basically allows everything to be drawn. So when you, for example, are doing something, in particular, I like doing, I, I relate to programming, so that's what I like to talk about is that you know, when you're setting up a graphical uh, user interface, a GUI, um, you have a lot of options to draw, and that's what this handles, is it allows you to go through and draw, tell your code, hey, I wanna draw a square, in, in rough terms, and it draws a square on this, and that's basically what this is, it's kind of like a in-between between what you wanna have on your program and have everything drawn on this, taking it off the CPU, which is why it was originally invented. And then we've got the CPU, and now for the CPU, we've got an old i5, but, Obviously, a CPU is important because when you're doing a lot of those computational tasks, which can be anywhere from some game physics, which obviously the graphics card to handle some of those, but some game physics, um, basically a lot of the inner workings of, you know, as I said, physics, um, a lot of the menus, all the operating system, which you may not even take into account when you're gaming, but the operating system also has to run on this. So what this does is it just crunches math at really high intervals. Now it's not just math. And there's a a lot of other things it does. It has cache on it, it offloads some of the memory, or offloads some of the variables, um, or data that's accessing, not variables, data that's accessing very frequently, and it offloads it here so that it can access it more quickly and have less lag. But that's the CPU, and those are the main components. Obviously the motherboard is basically like a big connecting network that connects all the parts together, uh, has a lot of features on it, basically is like a big input-output, all on the IO section side. And that's pretty much it. Now, obviously, you'll need a CPU cooler, power supply, and a case um, power supply. I would recommend a modular power supply. And, of course, for picking out parts, um, I know the Verge's video talked about PC Part Picker. Um, I will say that I've actually had a little bit of a... I wouldn't give that such a high rating. Um, for example, I have a Discord server where we go through and we help people pick out parts. Yes, we use PC Part Picker. It's a great tool. But if you really don't know what you're doing and you go on there and you start picking out parts, you might put a... A350 motherboard, which I'm sorry, I'm not, I think that's AMD motherboard. Um, yeah, a, a chipset AMD motherboard with like an 8 or Ryzen 7 2700X. And that's not necessarily the best combo. So there's a lot of those with like, you know, not being proportionate um, that you could really mess up on there. And I feel like, you know, 
someone that goes out and just follows the PC power packer isn't going to get what they need. Uh, and, you know, not going to bottleneck their hardware, which in, I've had in the past where the motherboard has bottlenecked, in overclocking at least. So that's what we're, I wanted to talk about today. So if you're interested in getting a PC, there's a Discord server down in the description if you're interested in that. But um, without further ado, there's pretty much a bunch of other cool things, and I will recommend one thing that's extra. I like a lot is LED. Now, obviously, I don't know how everybody else likes LED, but I like some LEDs. And there's like $7 LED strips that are out there on the internet. You can get something that looks, uh, I don't know, let's see if I can move my this case back here so you can get a look at my PC. This is my PC. And uh, this got $7 LEDs in it, and it looks nice. So that really does make an extra look, uh, make things look better. And I like that a lot. So let's also go over what you need today. So screwdriver. Now, understanding that some of these sockets and some of these CPUs will come with extra screwdrivers that support specifically that socket so you can install stuff. Those are important. You need those. But this screwdriver, the last, I think, 12 computers I built, only thing I really needed. Now, we also have some zip ties for cable management. Now, Zip ties are a great way to hold your cables together. Um, I've used cable clips in the past, that's what I have on this system. But, you are they optional as well. Like, you really don't need these. Yes, you get by. Cable management is support it, and I'll also show you a little bit of that today. But we have a screwdriver, and that's basically what we're going to do. So, without further ado, let's just get into just talking about the motherboard, installing some of the basic components, and then we'll go from there. So, without further ado, let's get into just starting with the motherboard. Okay, what's up? So basically we're just going to get started with installing the basic components on the motherboard. So a motherboard, as I said, is a great way to connect all the parts together. It's a good thing to do, and obviously every system needs one because without you just have a bunch of components right around in the computer case. So I have an old motherboard I've been using for the last, I don't know, year. This is actually my test system. And I have uh, this motherboard, and obviously if you were getting this brand new, you'd have a little socket protector on here to keep the pins from getting bent in. And, you know, you want to take that off and basically just pop up this little pin right here, or this little tab right here, and just throw your CPU in here. Now, before you throw in your CPU, please, please, please do not throw in your CPU without lining up the triangles. Now, some CPU sockets will have triangles in different places. Some CPU sockets will have pins on the CPU rather than the socket. And there's all different kinds of socket, AM4, um, LGA sockets from Intel, all those different things. So what you want to do is line up the little triangle on your CPU and line up the little triangle on the edge of your socket and drop them in there. Now, just keep in mind you want to make sure you line it up and don't apply too much pressure and it should just kind of pop in there and you're good. Just pop that over there, pop that down and apply a little pressure to lock it into place and you're done. Your CPU is installed. Now obviously if there's a bunch of different slight different variations in doing this and also a good thing to check is your manual because I cannot give you an exact specific thing for every person's CPU. So we'll just be honest here. So the next thing let's talk about is installing RAM. Now RAM is very sp specific to the motherboard. Some motherboards like to have their RAM start on different every other channels. Um, actually every motherboard that I've built and I'm aware of actually does do uh, um, odd or skipping channels. But some motherboards will start the RAM, say, put the, if you have only one stick, put it here. If you only have two sticks, then put it here and here. And basically, they're kind of color-coded, so you'd start there. I believe, if I'm correct, the dim is somewhere on this motherboard, and I believe it starts here. So we're going to start by putting the CPU in the red sockets, because this is what the motherboard suggests, since I've built with the system before. But some CPUs will start, or some motherboards will start the RAM here, some will start here. It really depends. And you want to put it in every other slot. Since I've only got two sticks, we're going to go for dual channel memory. And so we're going to throw these in there and basically just pop them in there until they click, push down until they click, make a nice clicking noise, as you can see. And you'll do the same for the other side, which you'll kind of get a nice little feel for how it feels like that. And then you've got your system all set up. Now, as I said, different motherboards will put this um, RAM in different spots and switch them over, move them over, variation one. But they should be every other variating with some little room in the s or skipping a slot in between. So that's that. Now, next up, we're going to talk about installing your CPU. Now, this CPU and this cooler have gone through the war, and as you can tell, this is not necessarily clean. Well, that's actually from a while back when I did testing with like jelly and peanut butter and toothpaste. Is actually where I tested. I tested different thermal pastes to see what their um, different how how well they held up. Now, obviously, you're going. Why would you be testing that? Well, let's be honest. I was pretty bored, and I thought it'd be a cool idea. And actually, it turns out jelly is an amazing thermal paste. And if you ever run out, it's a great thing to do. I recommend checking out that video too. It was really fun to record. But that was almost a year ago now. And you know. 
still stuff is a little sticky and I can't necessarily get it off even with alcohol. So it's a little interesting story. So I apologize that my CPU is not the most cleanest thing on the planet. But as for my cooler, I've cleaned that up pretty well. And I'm gonna go get the thermal paste now, guys. And we're gonna apply some thermal paste. We'll talk about that one in a second. Okay, it's now time to apply the thermal paste. Now people will give you all kinds of directions on how to do this. But in short, simple terms, a pea size to a little bit more for pea size and bigger processors like a thread up or something, this general concept and something good to follow. Now, let's go through and put some thermal paste on here. Now, everybody can critique everybody on how to put thermal paste on, and I just go for a pea size right in dead center. Now, obviously I've actually done the second try because the first try I did it, it actually kind of messed up and I was a little disappointed in how pea turned out. And that is my, let's see if I can go, oh, yeah, th this was not the most, And keep in mind, you don't want any air bubbles whatsoever. So, I'm just gonna kind of apply that. I'm gonna yank that up a little bit. And there you go. You've got a nice pea sized thermal paste. Now, obviously, this is a little runny, and I apologize. It's not going to necessarily be the best. Um, so, I, I do it again, apologize, because it's not the most prettiest thermal paste application I've done in a while. But I apologize, and let's just get into applying the CPU. So, some CPU coolers will have different mounting mechanisms. You'll have a mounting mechanism on some that will um, be uh, just you just screw into the pins. Um, others you'll have stuff that needs to go underneath the motherboard. In this case, we've got pins that go underneath the motherboard into the CPU. So let's do that. So I'm just going to apply the CPU cooler and let's just go through and make sure I line that up. I'm for the sake of this video going to do it so that it lines up facing upwards so that we get a lot more um, CPU leverage and CPU room. So let's just go through. So for this um, CPU cooler, that's the Reva, um, Reven Brontes. Um, actually, CPU cooler they sent me, which I thought was pretty cool of them. Um, I'm just going to line, put this flat down, and flip over the motherboard onto here. Why? Because that's the best way to mount it, um, because I have screws to put in here. And also, I'm a little bit aware of what I'm doing here. So, I'm going to kind of line that up. Now, obviously, someone's going to tell me, well, that's kind of stupid, because, you know, you're going to have to worry about lining everything up. Yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that. But it's easier for me to put the pins in on the bottom this way. Now, usually for most people, you'll have a mounting mechanism, a mounting bracket that you'll go through and uh, attach and it will kind of screw in and you won't have to really flip the motherboard over, which obviously is a much easier way. But for this system, that's what I'm necessarily needing to do. And so I would recommend, you know, depending on your system, follow your instructions there. So the next thing is talking about screwing in these screws on the CPU for the CPU cooler. First off, you don't want to go too tight, but also you want to make sure you keep in mind to go in every other alternating way. So here we are. So we're going to line this up. I'm going to screw these two down diagonally, and then we'll screw down the other two diagonally. Why? Because we don't want to apply too much pressure, but we also don't want to off-balance it and risk damaging the motherboard. So we're going to go through and do that to every other. And now that I've got those two down, I'm just going to kind of balance those together. And then we've kind of got them screwed in together and make sure they're kind of tight. I like the CPU cooler a lot because the pins actually have some rubber on the bottom. And there you go. You have a firmly mounted CPU cooler that's actually pretty solid, which you should be able to pick up the motherboard with because it's a good solid mount. So next up, you want to find the CPU uh, cooler power, which right is right here for me, depending on where you are or who you are. That might be something you want to keep in mind is this where that is. And also for cable management, which is a very important part of any PC build, you want to make sure that it's kind of tucked away and out of sight because no one likes a bunch of cables running around a PC. So there you go. That is the most application we're going to do right now. And now that we've got the cooler in here, and obviously depending on the cooler, um, especially for liquid coolers, you may want to put those into the top of the case before you mount, um, which makes it a lot more difficult. It does depend, but honestly, I personally prefer getting the cooler mounted first before you start mounting things up in the case because once you get in the case, it's a lot more uh, space constrictive, and you've got to be really careful um, about the components you have in there. Now, obviously, it's a good idea to test your system, um, throw your graphics card in there, and pull the power supply out. But I know all these parts work, so I'm going to get into this. So let's take out the case now and get started. So I'm going to give you guys an overhead view of this case. I've got a non-modular power supply, and this is a power supply that is practically the worst for cable manager on the planet. But I'm going to show you how to cable manage with it anyway. So if you can do it with the worst, you should be able to do it with the best. So keep in mind, this is a $10 computer case that I got at a yard sale, which I'm actually pretty proud of. And today I'm going to show you how to install everything. So I've got a lot of extra cables, and for you, you'll just have to plug in the cables in the back. Now, I haven't mounted the power supply yet, and these rubber pads back here are not to insulate the power supply from shorting out or electrocuting you or anything like that. 
They're for noise dampening. Why? Because the power supply actually vibrates slightly when the fan runs. And you want to make sure that you don't have that rattling somewhere in your case. Now most cases won't have that and don't worry about it. But they're also usually um, a little bit of a I actually took this off, the filter which likes to fall off. And there's a filter on the bottom that allows the power supply's intake fan, which is mounted always on the bottom, to have ample breathing room. So basically make sure you always have that mounted on the bottom. Now in this case, it wouldn't be too bad to have it mounted upwards if you had a problem with like something on the bottom, I don't know. But in most cases there's usually like a shroud here or something along those lines, and you really do need to mount it on the bottom. So me, I've just gotten in the habit of mounting on the bottom. Now, mounting up the power supply, eh, but I like it always mounting down. So we're gonna put the CPU motherboard in here, or the CPU motherboard and graphics card in here next. So I'm just gonna kind of push these down. Um, I only have a few screws out, so I will have to install a couple of screws just to screw everything in, and then I'll continue screwing uh, and grab a couple more screws to make sure everything is amply tightened. So I'm just gonna put aside any of the CPU or case fans over here, and I'm actually gonna probably just throw those right there for now, for the moment. Well, that didn't work out as well as I'd like, and I'm just gonna kind of put these up here. If I can finally put some put this somewhere, I'll just throw it right there. And let's mount the CPU cooler right here. Now, as I said, that ample um, CPU cooler, making sure your CPU cooler is fully tightened, is very important. So you want to make sure you line up your holes. Now, I don't have an I/O shield, which most people will, but you also got to keep in mind that when your I/O shield is up here, you kind of line it up there. Now, obviously, I lost my I/O shield, and sadly. I'm not going to spend the time to look for it at the moment because it's in a pile of computer parts sitting over on the other side of the room. So I'm going to line up just the CPU holes, you will see them right there, you line them up, and then you grab your screws and you line a few up. Now, uh, as I said, I'm only going to put in two at the moment and then you guys will see me in a couple seconds, grab the rest of them and I'll screw the rest of them in. So when you first start with your CPU screw, or your motherboard screws, my bad, um, you want to kind of pick one that are diagonally supporting the CPU socket. Why? Because that allows you to put prop the, CPU, or prop the motherboard up without running into issues. When you tighten them, don't tighten them too hard, but also make sure you get them so that you don't have any wiggle room so you can't really lift up the, the motherboard any bit there. So I'm going to get that top CPU or top um, screw right here. And now this motherboard is stable, yes, but it's not fully screwed in and I wouldn't recommend moving at the moment. So I'm going to go grab the rest of the screws and then we'll get started. So there we go guys, we've got the CPU and it's all mounted, or the motherboard, all mounted. So next up, I'm going to start wiring in a few things. Now I'll show you guys in the back how I wire a lot of this stuff in, so you guys can be aware for that. But we're going to save the CPU power for a couple seconds, the motherboard power for a couple seconds, and then the GPU power, which is also going to be in a couple seconds. So we'll set those all aside, because we'll be needing those in a couple seconds. We'll talk about SATA. So hard drives, let me actually pop one of these out. Um, these are mounted in the back, so give me a second, because I've got to yank them out. So the hard drives are here, example, you have one here. They have two components. And now obviously some people have NVMe drives, you have an SSD, uh, 2.5 inch SSD. Um, those will also have these, the 2.5 SSD and this um, hard drives um, will have those two options. If you have an NVMe drive, you'll know where they are on the motherboard. The motherboard's instructions will tell you how to mount those. I will not give you instructions how to do that because let's be honest, if I gave you instructions on how to do them, I haven't even seen your motherboard yet. And for all you know, for all I know, you could be watching this video three years down the road, and you're trying to do, figure out how to build a PC from this video would not be a great thing for, especially how to mount that for that motherboard in the future that I have never even seen yet, would not be a great idea. So we're going to basically just go through. Now, obviously this is a NAS system. This is actually my personal $200 or $100 NAS that I built for my video editing. And this is obviously, that was also a past video that I did. And um, basically what I'm trying to do here is just kind of mount um, SATA cables, because there's a lot of them. Um, why? Because, well, you kind of need a lot of them in order to um, have a lot of mass storage. So I'm just going to route this underneath this wire right here. And we're going to put these motherboard power in here, uh, the 24 pin motherboard power. And uh, we're going to throw that in there now. So let me just pop that in there. Um, you kind of make sure you line up the pin on this side, out facing that way. And just kind of pop it down there. Should get a nice click. The next thing you want to know is keep in mind that you want to kind of move cables out. We'll install the graphics card and then we'll go around back to show you what it's going to look like behind when we go through and put the um, CPU power pin back there. So let's grab the graphics card now. Um, I'm going to pick this one right up here and just kind of drop it down there. Now I've already taken out the I.O. ports, but you know, you may want to take those out um, before you put your graphics card in. Just, just, some, just some advice. 
and make sure you screw these down as well. These need screws because, well, if you're transporting your computer, um, you don't want your graphics card falling apart. Um, now, some cases will have like a pin locking mechanism that you don't have to do this. Some cases will do something different, but most cases, in most situations, will most likely have just some screws. And this hasn't really changed much over the last couple of years. So make sure those are nice and tight in there because you don't want your mother or your graphics card wiggling around, especially when they're getting expensive. Like, I don't know, the god awful expensive price of $1,600 what is it, two, $1, for the new RTX cards. I don't even know what they're thinking at this point. And then we'll take this cable around back in a couple seconds. So let's just take this around real quick and flip over, flip over the case. I'm going to put the front panel back on. We'll get a little bit more of the I.O. in a couple seconds and then we'll flip back around and we'll get started. Now one thing I forgot to mention is make sure you screw in the back of the power supply. Um, I may or may not have accidentally flipped over the case with the power supply and not screwed in because I forgot that I was supposed to do that in this video. I thought I had already done it. So just grab a couple screws, screw that in, and make sure you do that because you don't want to flip it over before you do that like I did. Don't be a stupid idiot. I already know it, guys. I already know it. But make sure you put all the screws in the back as well um, that you can. You'll have to line them up with the case. Uh, just make sure you do that and just go to town. So now that you've got your power supply uh, mounted like it should be, um, make sure you grab all the cables you need to and make sure everything's plugged in. So um, for this one, I don't think I actually plugged in the hard drive like I was supposed to on the back. So basically just go through and do that now and make sure you grab the same cable, feed that through if that's what you're doing. If you don't have any hard drives then, well, whoa, whoa, you left out. Um, so next up is my favorite thing is called a little bit of cable management. Now, cable management can be fun and f funner, I guess is the best way to put it. There's no such thing as perfectly fun cable management because I personally don't like it. But that's just my opinion. I think that cable management is a, I'm more excited to get into the build, but it also is a very important part of every build, which I think is kind of also something you need to keep in mind when you're going through building something like a computer. So we've got all the SATA cables fed through. I've got the I/O fed through, but we also need to make sure we grab the CPU and feed it through, or CPU power and feed it through up here. So I'm gonna go real quick, slide this off the edge of the table, look underneath, and grab myself the CPU power that we've been looking for. Here, so take the cable, put it up front as you'll bring it forward. And so. So most motherboards will have one of these, and you want to make or these holes right here, because you want to make sure you include those and you actually use those, because, well, it's kind of important that you have power to your CPU. So next up, we just make sure you plug in those last set of cables if you brought any over. Um, I plowed a bunch that I had already plugged in from earlier in this video. Well, that's kind of because I wanted to make sure that I had my NAS fully working when I get done with this video. So then you're going to have a couple cables in the I.O. should be somewhere. Let's grab that. And now I.O. is also something I really can't give you as much detailed instructions as I guess everyone would like. And that's kind of because I.O. is really dependent on the system itself. Now obviously, you, especially the motherboard, um, I.O. you really got to follow the instructions that are provided on your, um, on your I guess, informational um, manual, uh, things like that. You really got to follow that. And I can't really tell you how to install the I.O. because as I said, every motherboard is completely different. Now, cable management, especially when you're working with a ball of cables, um, is kind of an interesting situation. So I'm just going to start going to town on fixing and solving some of these issues with cable management, and then we'll get a little bit more detailed on just the wrapping and final steps. So now that you've got your I.O., you basically just go about plugging that in. Okay, so remember those zip ties we talked about at the beginning? Well, we're going to actually go through now and use some of them. So, here we are. We're just going to take one big zip tie. And we're going to take it all underneath all this mess of cables. So, this computer does not have a um, USB 3 um, panel on the front, so I'm not plugging that in. But yours will, so make sure you plug that in. Um, I know that there's nowhere to put it, um, so keep that in mind. Um, but also, now I'm just going to start pushing a little bit of the wires all underneath here. So it's all in a little bit of a ball back here, so that, that way, in the future, when I need to upgrade it or something along those lines, I have it all down in a little area down here. Which, as I said, since it's a fully module or a non modular, you really got to do a lot of work with it. But then you're ready to put the side panels on. Make sure you plug in your CPU cooler fans. Um, actually, I've got one down here. Um, and then, of course, I've got two in the front, but they don't actually reach over here. So keep that in mind, just plug those in and um, 
you're done. So that's the whole system. Um, make sure you've gotten everything um, plugged in all your hard drives. That's the only things I'd say. Also, if your computer doesn't boot, make sure you turn on the, um, or make sure you have your I/O set up. Um, that's the biggest problem if it doesn't even turn on. And if it does, if you have problems, make sure you check the hard drives. Um, but that's the best I can do. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I'm going to put the side panels on and we'll kind of close up here. That's going to wrap it up for today's video. I hope you enjoyed, and there goes my screwdriver. But I also want to give a quick thanks to my screwdriver for being the only tool that I'm using today in today's video. Also, thank you very much for everyone that watched all this far. I hope you guys enjoyed this build video. Um, basically, anything you have to do past this point is just install Windows, which is basically a USB installation key. Um, best tips, I guess, is for to go online and read the instructions there, because me explaining it is not going to be anywhere close to as helpful as the Microsoft website that has the download key on it, which you're going to stop by anyway to get one. So. Without further ado, make sure you hop on there. Also, a couple quick tips. Uh, 30 bucks is all you need to go on kingwin.com or whatever, and they have Windows license keys. I've used them for the last, I think, seven builds that I've had, and no one's ever complained, so I think we're good on that. I actually use that as well on this current system. And, uh, yeah, it's great. Windows 10 fully works. It's Windows 10 Pro, and it works fine. And I've used that without paying the hundred and some dollar premium that you have to pay for full windows key but that that's very good and i i think it's a great deal so um but thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed today's parody build of the verges pc only we kind of did everything right uh, i know i'm gonna do something wrong so i fess up to that as well i'm human um but i hopefully will just say a lot less things wrong um but thank you very much for watching subscribe if you enjoyed and of course check out my video where i actually went through and followed the verges build guide on there as well thank you very much for watching goodbye